place names tell the story. Schulenberg, Cibolo, Quana, Pana Maria, Aberdeen. The story of the people who settled Texas, where they came from and what they brought with them, their music and folklore, traditions, customs, beliefs. Today, these rich and varied strands give Texas a heritage that's truly unique. And unique is exactly what a new breed of tourists is looking for. They're called cultural and heritage tourists. And what they want from leisure travel is an experience. They want to stand at the Alamo and imagine what it was like when Colonel William B. Travis drew that legendary line in the sand. They want to see how a desert landscape becomes a setting for modern art. They want to go back a thousand years and explore a wildlife habitat that time forgot. Who are these cultural and heritage tourists? They're the same baby boom generation that gave us uh, meaningful relationships and quality time. Educated, sophisticated, with the money and inclination to travel. They spend more and stay longer than any other travelers. And when they take a vacation, they want to go home with more than a tan. They want insights, enrichment, authenticity. And what they want, Texas has in droves. We've got prehistoric cave paintings, concert halls, and courthouses in the Beaux-Arts style. We have battlefields and battleships, beer fests and ballet. We have storytelling festivals, pageants as big as all outdoors. It's an amazing cultural mix, and it makes Texas one of the two most popular states in the country for cultural and heritage tourism, which just happens to be the fastest growing market in the travel industry worldwide. When we look at tourism in Texas, the Centennial Exposition had to be a defining moment. The popularity of the exposition awakened many cities to the potential for tourism in Texas. One of those cities was Fort Worth. Remember, this was the 30s, and the same government work program that built Fair Park gave Fort Worth a new cultural asset as well the Will Rogers Auditorium and Coliseum. But how does a city that started life as a frontier outpost, once popular with gamblers and gunslingers, a city known as Cowtown, become a mecca for cultural and heritage tourism? Simple. Fort Worth recognized what made it special and had the good sense to talk it up instead of tear it down. They built a major museum district for science, history, and fine art. They saved a 14-block collection of historic storefronts and in the process revitalized downtown. They took the smelly old stockyards, restored the best, replaced the rest, and created an authentic Old West experience. None of it happened overnight, and it didn't happen without leadership and vision or for that matter, perseverance. It took Fort Worth three decades to realize its dream of a world-class performance hall, and when the doors finally opened, <laughs> you talk about proud, and pride is what it's all about. Pride and quality of life. Every community has cultural assets. And the first step toward cultural and heritage tourism is to identify the things that make your town unique. For towns like Bonham, Beaumont, Turkey, and Texarkana, it's a favorite son or daughter. Sometimes the thing that makes a city special is an event. Still other cities find their identity in a place. By taking a historical site or building, giving it a new life. And while we're talking about architectural treasures, take a look at Galveston. 
Chartered three years after Texas independence, it quickly became the queen city of the Gulf. Fortunes were made in banking, publishing, and trade, and neighborhoods reflected the prosperity. The boom period ended with the 1900 storm. By the 1950s, the city's fortunes and priorities had changed. Ashton Villa, one of the oldest, grandest mansions on the island, was destined for the wrecking ball. One proposal was to tear it down and build a gas station in its place. But the Galveston Historical Foundation and Galveston Arts Council stepped in and saved the day. In the next few decades, dozens of architectural gems were turned into house museums. But you can only tour so many houses before you're ready for something different, like a sandwich, a shopping spree. Galveston needed a destination, so they turned their attention to the Strand. With the help of a foundation grant, they created a revolving fund. They'd buy an old iron front building, sell it to a preservationist, and use the proceeds to buy another. Now the Strand is a National Historic Landmark, a place to live, work, shop, eat, and uh, party. Especially in December, when Galveston hosts Dickens on the Strand. As for the city's maritime history, head for the waterfront. You'll find the Alyssa, a restored merchant ship that was a frequent visitor to Galveston in the late 1800s. Turning cultural assets into Tourist-worthy attractions is a huge undertaking for any community. And no one individual or institution can do it alone. It takes partnerships. It's true for Galveston. It's true for cities across the state. In Houston, a dozen museums have formed an alliance to create awareness and strengthen attendance for these important cultural resources. In San Antonio, the Witte Museum brought other cultural institutions and the local travel industry together on a special promotion called Hidden Treasures. For small and rural communities, connecting with your next door neighbors is a smart way to enhance your assets and resources. The Texas Forts Trail region, the corridor of Old West Forts, is a good example. The Los Caminos del Rio Heritage Project, Roads of the River, is another. In the past few years, a revolutionary partnership between two countries, more than 40 communities, and half a dozen government agencies has produced a 200-mile-long heritage corridor, unlike anything else in Texas. It's a remarkable journey that takes you from the bunkhouse to the pump house to the lighthouse. Los Caminos del Rio is a three-dimensional history of the last 250 years. It's the story of ranching empires that began with land grants from the King of Spain. Enterprising Spanish homesteaders who turned brush land into lush farmland. Historic shipwrecks and dreams that ran aground. Once dismissed as backwards and unremarkable, this stretch of borderland is anything but its history is rich and deep. It has great respect for our environmental heritage, and it celebrates life in a way that brings diverse cultures together. Los Caminos is a tribute to grassroots commitment and regional cooperation. An example of cultural and heritage tourism at its best because it preserves what cannot be replaced. Can you imagine San Antonio without the Alamo, Comanche without Old Cora, Lubbock without the Buddy Holly Walk of Fame, Amarillo without Cadillac Ranch? These are the things that make a town an experience. And for cultural and heritage tourists, that's what it's all about. We want to travel the boat roads of mysterious Caddo Lake which legends say was formed by shaking earth spirits in the dark of the moon. We want to trace the evolution of San Angelo from frontier outpost to center for the fine arts. 
We want to saddle up and follow the Buffalo Soldiers of Fort Griffin on one last historic ride. No matter where you look, Texas is filled with Lone Star attractions that make history and culture come alive. And no matter where you live, the cultural and heritage tourism trail runs straight through the heart of your town. It does through mine. It sure makes a fella proud. Texans are Texans, I'll hail the mighty state. God bless you, Texas.